All right, so a lot of people are like always confused on why we always tell them like, oh, uh, we'll let you know during phase two and three, like whenever they ask us questions about what we're doing next. So do you mind just letting me know like what the other phases are? Okay, so phase two is the conceptualist. So what phase two really focuses on is basically sharing ideas that could possibly help this game. Now, the thing is, is that yes, the 2.5 update, it's gonna be, you know, like, Oh, oh, all pretty designs, aesthetics, stuff like that. But the problem is, is that we know that there are some serious fundamental flaws that need to be highlighted in this game. And the best way to do it is to get the collaborative support of everyone we have now to just really just discuss like the problems they see and how they can possibly solve it. That's what phase two is about. Phase two is about implementing these new systems based on the problems people highlight and possible solutions. So what we were in really trying to do at the start was we really wanted to have the forums up and we would just post topics about certain problems and revivalists could come in they can criticize things if they're if they are problems or not and if so where can we improve and what are possible solutions yeah yeah and it's all right it's like everybody can just chin in their own little way and we can come up with something fairly interesting and unique and we can also it would basically be like a perfect final design from a large part of the community and because it's from the large part of the community it's more likely that staff is going to listen to it and staff can relay it over to Gert. yeah so and dude we have a hundred seventy five plus people at the moment and that is actually really going to help us um you know get more ideas out there and like exactly. i think weren't you going to say something about how um, we're going to get all these these ideas and like condense them down uh can you kind of elaborate on that what i specifically mean on that is like we basically, everyone, for example, let's say five people, for example, they have a certain problem with, I don't know, um, a scoring system. But each one of them has a slightly different problem. Because, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that not everybody's problems are constant. So let's say those five people are revivalists, right? And they go, and one of them starts this topic up. They say, oh, I don't like the scoring system or whatever. It's not really a problem, but let's say it is. And these other four people, they can pitch in what they experienced was wrong as well and they each of them can criticize the other person as to whether or not you know their ideas make sense or like you know if it's like if it really is a problem itself and eventually as we get more and more people to really pitch in on that one idea we begin to see a sort of finalized polished concept this is what we should be submitting to the staff and to the developer yeah, we, we don't want like a hundred ideas just floating around. We kind of just want to like, you know, get it down into just one core like message maybe or just well, however way we're going to let the staff know and Eric Gerd himself, obviously. But yeah, right. Yeah, it's going right. to be a place for like for us all to commu communicate and stuff. And uh, going on from that, um, this is going to be during phase two, right? Yes, this is all phase two. It's important because if we can get these new systems up, it can really help improve the game. And later on, we get into phase three which is the street crew. Basically, that's when we advertise the game to new players. At the very least, we'll have some sort of pre-existing system where the game will sort of be more fair because the community sort of pitched in their own ideas on how to improve it. Granted, there might be some problems, but generally, many of the big ones should be solved. But the reality is that if you jump into multiplayer, even if you finish the entire campaign, right, on let's say normal difficulty, it's still gonna be hard because there are just so many things with this game that like you won't get unless you're an old time player and it just discourages new people from coming in or ever coming back. That's why advertising this game and sort of showing it off should come later once we've sort of established the system and at least improved on a few things. Yeah, yeah. And so, also yeah, that's so basic for Right. So um if phase two starts and phase three starts, does that mean phase one is just done or phase two is just done when three starts, etc.? You know what I'm saying? No, of course not. What's going on is that when phase two starts, of course, we expect, um, you know, the revivalists to still be playing the map IDs we post up for them. All that phase two really means is that there's just an additional way for people to really contribute into this project. And 
well, the first phase is just basically being online and playing different maps. People think this is all, all we have planned. That's not true, as I'm clearing shift to say right now. Phase one will, of course, not be over just because phase two or phase three began. All it just means is that there's just an extra way for people to contribute into the project. That's okay. basically it. Okay, and how successful would you say was, you know, phase one? I would say it was not perfect for obvious reasons. Um, I would be lying if I said that, you know, the servers did improve drastically in quality with the maps and all that, you know. The problem was that, well, Kali, especially in the unranked servers, you know, we especially saw a lot of real war maps. But in WASH and EU, you know, sure, some people were trying out some new maps and, you know, revivalists were coming in. The thing is, though, is that the population is just so low in those two servers. Even if you made a new map, the odds of someone joining it over in a pre-existing game of snipes or rails is it's slim and it really hurts the experience for new players if they just keep playing the same two maps over and over and over again so however it was obviously not a total failure because we managed to gain 175 people into this along with the majority of staff so and i mean we're all we did set. see them joining the games like um well uh, at least a few of the new maps they were trying them out um they were doing pretty much their job but exactly. there wasn't anything like really really significant but w we did see some effect you know going right. on it, right basically put on a report card grade out of four i'd give it a three it's it's sufficient at best we did manage to like we did manage to pull through milestones to how many members we have i mean we have there's so many people wearing the heart tag right now we actually cannot keep count as <laughs> like we're discovering new people every single day it's amazing but yeah, like yeah right but like the thing is is that many of them are not really playing at least from what i've seen so far is that many of them are not really playing the revivalist maps or they're not really that active and we're not going to force it on them because you know, this is all a voluntary effort, and it will always remain as a voluntary effort. Huh. Because, right, because the second we, you know, mandate responsibilities, that would turn us into a clan, you know. So, I mean, we definitely don't want to do that. So, all in all, I think the most important thing is, is just finding more ways as to how people can contribute as well. Because right now, sort of posting up maps is pretty small scale and i'm certain many revivalists think oh well i don't need to post up the map some other guy can do it and they can just do their job and this mentality starts to spread and no one posts maps and no one plays maps they all it's all just the same only people just have the r tag in their name that's yeah. why right we so, hope that doesn't happen we hope people just continue to uh explore the maps that we put on which will definitely be updated very soon yeah, um, we need to do that. Oh my yeah. gosh. So, <laughs> phase uh -huh. one began um, obviously about two, three weeks ago, somewhere around there. And when does phase two and three start? Phase two begins somewhere around mid October. Initially, it was supposed to start in December, but considering how mu how many people are with us <laughs> now, like I mean, it'd be it'd really be a waste if like we just went, nah, let's just wait two more months. Like that's not that doesn't make sense, you know, like. We should definitely get started with what we're planning right now. Yeah, and, and that right. and kind of carries over to like, um, if people just accidentally take off the tag, or like, well, not really accidentally, like, uh, what if they just take off the tag? Like, do you think they should take off the tag? Or, you know, you know what I'm going into right now. Right, right, right. I think that with all due respect to the people who have taken off the tag and are still revivalists though, I seriously think that the tag should still be kept on in June. Uh, until June, that is, of next year. And the reason being is that the Revivalist project is not over until next June. Because there are just things that I think we should really, really start implementing and stuff. And the only way to show that the Revivalist project is still going is if people still have these R tags on. It's, it's a really important factor. Honestly, it's the only way we can possibly tell people that we are here and this is what we're doing. Other than you know, spamming their inboxes with messages. So really, it's just, it really, it just helps us a lot more. And it allows us to keep track of who exactly is a revivalist. So keep your R tags on at least until next June. Because next June, which is only eight months from now, will ultimately decide whether or not the revivalist project made a difference. Yeah. 
and, uh, you know. Well, just a quick note. June is when uh, the third phase will be over, and that will complete all three phases. So Correct. Yeah. So right now, we currently have 175 people, as I've said about 5 billion times before. And we also have staff support, which is huge. I mean, the reality is, is that, yes, we don't have the forms right now, which really sucks because that was where the Revivalist Project started growing from and where we where was our main line of communication but generally it's just the amount of support from everyone you know just motivating each other and being there for the project it means a lot and we definitely notice it i mean we'll find alternate ways we will go we will undergo problems like the forums going down and stuff like that but for example one of the major ways how we communicate is through the youtube videos like this one right now I mean, it's not a huge hurdle. It's something that we can very easily overcome and we have all the means of doing this. This is our best chance right now. In my honest opinion, this is Plasmaverse's best chance of making a difference, really starting from the community, to give power to the player, to the people who have really been playing the game and truly been keeping it alive. You know, I think that you guys, not only just revivalists, but everyone in general deserves a sort of opportunity to speak out your minds and th the fact of the matter is is that i f honestly feel like i can't promise that we're gonna absolutely succeed even with the overwhelming amount of you know positivity that's been going on recently i can't because otherwise i'd be lying through my teeth or i'd be an over optimist that's undeniable but i do sincerely believe that this is the best chance this game has ever of doing this. If the Revivalist project fails, the reality is that the odds of someone restarting something similar to it is slim. And it's even slimmer that people are going to try and join that other, you know, second Revivalist project or whatever. So it's really just all, all or nothing at this point. And yeah, that so basically sums it up. Yeah, so we've got our resources, which are pretty much the YouTube channel and the forum when they go back up. And of course, we'll message you guys uh, with like the YouTube videos and updates and everything uh, in your PV2 inbox. And if you don't want that, as explained in the last video, just let us know. We won't message you anymore. Um, anyways, that has been it. Thank you very much, and goodbye. <laughs> All right. You I were actually recording that, weren't you? Yep. <laughs>